Welcome back to Juniper Highlands. One of the things that really drew me to this area, aside from the amazing views, is the history, or even the prehistory. Uh, this land was once inhabited by the ancestral Puebloans. Uh, they're better known as the Anasazi, and they're famous for their cliff dwellings, but they lived in places like this too. And uh, quite a few people appear to have lived here, and for a long time. Because everywhere you go on the homestead, there's all kinds of artifacts lying around, you know, whether it's flint chips or pottery shards, or this is my favorite site right here. Um, this is uh, what appears to be a storage bin for food. You can see the rocks put in around. I, I thought this was a fire ring at first, but then I found out later that it's really a place to store food. So you put your food in here and you cover it up and it'll stay fresh for a while. With that in mind, we really wanted to incorporate some elements of the historical artifacts in our building design. So we decided to paint the front door with a design from some ancestral Puebloan pottery. Um, and I love how it turned out. It's going to go great with how we plan to finish the rest of the building. My daughter and I did this last summer. If you'd like to see how we did it, you can go back to episode four. We bought the door on Craigslist for $45 and then we completely refinished it. Uh, now most earthback builders don't install the door. They just install the box frame and then when the building is finished they install the door last. I'm doing this a little bit differently because the specs on a door are so tight that I want to make sure that if there's a change in the dimensions of the box frame in any way as I'm pounding bags next to it that I can adjust it then and there. Uh, once the wall is built, you can't go back and make any changes. So as I go, I'm going to be able to open and close the door. So the door is installed and ready to go. Uh, the retaining wall for the stairway is almost complete. This side is ready to go. It's ready to be cobbed. This side just needs one more course. I'll probably have that finished today. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and cob that. What is cob? Well, I'll show you. Cob is an earthen building material that's made by mixing water with clay, sand, and straw. And it forms this really rigid material uh, some people build entire houses out of. There are places back in Europe that are over 500 years old that are made from cob. Um, I'm not using it for anything structural though. Uh, I'm using it as a base coat for my earthen plaster. So I'm filling in the spaces between the bags, these gaps here, and I'm trying to kind of make a flat surface uh, for my earthen plaster. Uh, the reason that I went ahead and did this now is because this wall is getting a lot of sunlight exposure and even though the bags are UV protected, I just didn't want to take any chances so I covered them up with some cob. So something else I wanted to share with you guys is attachment points. Uh, because you can't really uh, drive a nail into an earth bag wall or turn a screw into it, uh, you have to add attachment points for everything from door frames to uh, you know places to hang a picture. So uh, the standard attachment point is a Velcro plate, which I showed you briefly before. It's just a two by four attached to a piece of OSB, and then it has nails going through both sides that stab into the bag. So you can just uh, hammer this down into the bag below and then drop the bag on top, and it creates a really secure uh, attachment point just like this right here. Now another way you can do an attachment point is by inserting a piece of 2x6. The 2x6 is just a little bit taller than the bags, so you have two bags on either side holding it tight and then the bag on top holds it really tight. And then you'll see that I have some of those inserted in here so that I can put in the backsplash for the shower. Now uh, I'm trying a different type of attachment point over here. Uh, this is uh, just a piece of 2x6 with holes drilled into it and I've put metal strapping around the bag behind it. So far I've not been real happy with this because it's got a little bit of wiggle to it, but we'll see how it works with uh, three or four attachment points. Well, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time when we add some rebar reinforcement to the walls and install some windows.